very nice opportunity for the children to learn about Christ by just one simple gift. For Operation Christmas Child, prayer is the glue that holds it all together. And these boxes are going to children around the world who have little to nothing. Woo -woo! All right, train leaving your station onto another country to make a difference in a child's life. Operation Christmas Child reaching the farthest places around the globe by sharing this tangible, simple, but powerful gift. It's like God has just come down to them. The love has just been poured on them. She is in heaven. Every box we give out, we try to give out in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to make Christ known uh, to every kid. And uh, we see every year tens of thousands of kids put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. The Greatest Journey is a 12-lesson discipleship program that many children have the opportunity to participate in after they receive a shoebox. Children are now running to the churches. They use not to go to church on Sunday. Operation Christmas Child, you're bringing life back to the church. It is so good to see you here in the house of the Lord today, and we are participating again this year in Operation Christmas Child. There's information in the bulletin about how to pack a box and about uh, Operation Christmas Child. Our goal this year is 250. Uh, last year our goal was 200, and we did like 270 boxes, I believe it was, last year. So we're going to set the goal at, at 250 and believe that we'll go way over that goal this year. How about that? So there's information there, uh, and I know that different groups and classes as well as individuals will be participating in that this year as we uh, bless children all around the world. It is good to have you here this morning. Uh, good to be in the house of the Lord. You know, sometimes I feel like when I stand up here, it's just kind of like a broken record almost. But when I say that, it is sincerely, it is so good to be in the house of the Lord, folks. I mean, is, are, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? We're blessed and privileged to be able to gather together. I was thinking about that this morning. There are so many people all around this world that would love to have this opportunity to gather and worship the Lord in freedom without any hindrance, without any obstacles, without fear of someone coming in on them and tell them they can't do that or even for fear of their life. We are so blessed and I hope we realize what a blessed privilege and opportunity it is for us to gather together. And we're glad that you're here. Uh, if you're visiting with us, we're glad that you're here. And we just want to take just a moment uh, to greet each other. And Rocky Hill family, please make sure that our visitors are welcome this morning. Let's stand together and say hey to each other. Last week we had such a powerful service last Sunday morning and I just once again want to thank all of those who helped to make that possible last Sunday morning. Uh, it was such a team effort and uh, we are just really blessed to have a great group of youth leaders and I'm just going to ask all of those who are involved in the youth ministry if you would stand up for just a moment.
here and there and yonder. Give them all a great big hand. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you do. Um, coming up this week, of course, is Trunk or Treat. And uh, if you would like to sponsor a trunk and you have not let Elizabeth or Jennifer know that, if you will let them know that this morning, that would be great. Uh, donations for Trunk or Treat are due today. Also, more desserts are needed, cookies, cupcakes, brownies, etc. cetera. Uh, and if you're going to be sponsoring a trunk, please be here by 5.30 Thursday. And uh, also, I've been told that we will have Trunk or Treat rain or shine. So uh, gonna, it's going to go either way. And we're having pizza, chips, and dessert instead of hot dogs this year. So that's Trunk or Treat uh, this, this year. Tonight, uh, Pastor Henry is going to comment on the service tonight, but it's going to be a very special time tonight. I want to encourage you to be here. The time will be at 7 uh, o'clock as, as the normal uh, evening service is. Uh, then Wednesday night are regular activities. This coming Saturday, there's a Brotherhood-sponsored work day here beginning at 8 o'clock. We want to encourage you to come and help and be a part. There will be stuff that everybody can do. Uh, the youth are going to come and help with the work day, and then about 10 o'clock or so, we're going to leave and go out to do a, a community evangelistic outreach. We're going to give out the rest of the white crosses that we have, and we are going to hand out literature in our community, and this is all part of the My Hope effort and campaign. So next Saturday will be a busy day, but it will be a good day uh, as, as we participate in those kinds of things. Another thing to, I want to mention is daylight savings time ends next Saturday night. Fall back. Set your clocks back an hour next Saturday night. Uh, uh, if you don't remember to do that, you'll be real early for church. Amen? Uh, you just have to hang around for an hour till we all get here. But uh, that's next Saturday night, so remember that. And uh, those are the things that are coming up. And uh, I'm going to ask Pastor Cook if he would to come and share with us about tonight and lead us in our morning prayer time. Thank you, Brother Lee. I'm like my mother-in-law for many, many times. In many years, she used to say, I wish they'd quit messing with God's time, <laughs> moving it up and moving it back. <laughs> and and I, I agree with my mother-in-law. Amen. Uh, I tell you, I think God knew what he was doing when he set it up at the, the beginning. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll adjust to that. Uh, tonight is going to be a very special time. We have a very special video by Billy Graham. Please be sure to be here at 7 p.m. Uh, this is one of the most moving things I have ever witnessed. Uh, and it's all tying into the My Hope campaign. Uh, it is entitled Defining Moments in Our Lives. And uh, I tell you, it's, it's awesome. You don't want to miss it. So come and be a part of that with us tonight uh, and pray that God's Spirit will speak to our hearts through this video uh, and we will get to see Billy Graham uh, interwoved in this and preaching the Word of God and, and wonderful life-changing experiences uh, through this video. And so we praise God for that. Let's stand to our feet and we're going to have prayer together and we ask that you reach across the aisle. Some of us will have to move a good distance. We, we've got uh, a lot of spare pews this morning. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, you reach across the aisle if you can and join hands together. Yeah. Father God, we want to bless you for who you are in each of us. This is your day, Lord. We do rejoice and we're glad in it. We're so thankful to be in your house this morning. And we bless you, Father, because you are the source of all of our blessings. But most of all, we love you for who you are. You are our Father, which art in heaven. And we come today, Lord Jesus, to hallow your name, the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit, to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For God seeketh such to worship him, for he is spirit. And so, Father, help us as we enter into this time of worship that we will do that in the spirit of the Lord God Almighty, that is, he will move upon our hearts and our lives this day. Father, we want to bless you again for who you are. Thank you for our salvation through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. We bless you for his sacrifice and for the gift of eternal life. 
through his death on the cross of Calvary. Father, we pray for our family here at Rocky Hill. We pray for those who are visiting with us this morning. Many lives have many needs, Father, and you know all of these, for you are the sovereign God of this universe. And we can come to you, and we do now, to lift up these in prayer to our Father. And we entrust them into your hands, their needs, their desires, their desperation, whatever it is, we entrust them into your sovereign, eternal hands. Thank you for being here with us today, Father. We welcome you, and we bless you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Ask our children, if you would, to come and join Miss Regina for Children's Church this morning. So children, come on down. Whoa. Good morning. How is everybody this morning? I sent Don to ask Jerry about the microphone. I just can't talk without my hands, you know, if you tell my hands behind my back, I'm one of those people that couldn't talk. Good catch. <laughs> Good catch. We're going to talk about things that you can catch today, because I know a lot of you guys play ball, but that's not the kind of things we're going to talk about. <coughs> Ooh, that was re- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that was really loud. <laughs> my goodness, I wasn't expecting that. Hey, Isis. This is my little granddaughter. <laughs> you know, I can shake my hand. Sorry, I'm really, I apologize for that, y'all. Uh, <laughs> Isis wouldn't shake my hand after I sneezed in it. How come? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things that we can catch that we don't want to catch. Like, you know, we're coming up on flu season and the cold season and sinuses and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of things around that we really don't want to catch. Um, people, you hear people say, oh, you know, I'll be so glad if it's cold weather and kill all the bugs. That's not true because the bugs thrive in cold weather. That's when we're sicker in the wintertime. Um, but there's also some things that we do want to catch. Right, Jocelyn? Look at her, see? You, I didn't even have to tell you that. Normally I'll go to the kids and say, will you help me with this? And she just smiled right back. Do you know that you can catch a smile has anybody ever, like, blew you a kiss? And, you know, you catch it. My little granddaughter did, did that the other day, and I, I caught myself reaching up and catching. I hadn't done that in a long time. And when people start laughing, did you hear that a while ago? One person laughed, and everybody laughed. Laughter is catching. So I used to tell the youth, you know, if um, somebody wastes their breath to say hello to you, please speak back. And, you know, our youth's not like that. They don't even know if Grayson's here. Yeah, he is. Grayson's got to be the friendliest person in the whole wide world. I mean, I just love Grayson. Um, but we need, as Christians, to be friendly. I was reading, and there's so many scriptures in the Bible that, you know, I had in mind talking about um, things you can catch. And, you know, you, you can be around people that's in a bad mood, and that rubs off on you. And I was thinking about the Israelites when Moses went up on the mountain. They started complaining. All it took was one person to start complaining. And all of a sudden, there was a, an idol, a golden idol. Because they said, oh, we need something to worship while Moses is up on the mountain. But in that respect, too, it takes one person. I was reading over in John, the first chapter, where Jesus was selecting his disciples. And John and Andrew went running to Simon Peter. And guess what? Guess what? I don't think they went up to him and said, guess what? We saw Jesus. You know, he's wonderful. I think they went running up to him and said, guess what, guess what, we met the Messiah. And uh, I want you guys to remember that, that um, as Christians, we need to be happy. Jesus wants us to be happy. You all have so much to be happy about. You're so blessed. You live in wonderful homes. You have wonderful parents, people that love you, wonderful grandparents, right? Right? (laughs) <laughs> he's, he's looking around like, where? <laughs> um, but you just have so many people in your lives that love you and care about you. 
and God wants us to be happy. And as you're happy, have you ever heard that little expression that you may be the only Bible that someone reads? Have you ever heard that? Do you know what that means? You've never heard that? Well, it's, it's just a cliche that's been around as long as I can remember. You may be the only Bible that somebody reads. And that's because your actions speak so much louder than words. Does that make sense? Your actions speak a lot louder than words. So as children of God, we belong to God. And that should make us the happiest people in the world. Um, recently, I lost a good friend, Marsha McClellan. And I've not questioned God very much. Um, a lot of things have happened in my life, and there's been a couple times I've said, Why, God? She loved the Lord. She was working in school with children, and they were coming back from a jubilee in Nashville, Tennessee. And for whatever reason, God chose to take her home. And I was questioning God about that. And he spoke to me, and he says, But isn't she where you long to be? And I thought, Oh, yeah, you're so right, Lord. And God works all things out for our good. All things. We just have to trust him. So you need to go out and at school and be happy and share Jesus with others. Even if you don't say a word, Gracie, people see how you act. And people watch how we act as Christians, as older adults as well. So remember that. Okay, let's pray. Dear gracious living Loving Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much, Father God, for, for dying on the cross and for reminding me, Lord, that we have everlasting life through you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That, my friend, is where I long to be, and someday I'll be there. And I just pray for these children, Lord, that you would just lead them and guide them, and that they would look to you, Father, for everything. Lord, our, the Bible is our book of instructions before leaving earth. Any concern that we have, Lord, we can open up your word and you tell us, Lord, what we need to do. And I thank you so much for that. I thank you for the many, many blessings you've given us, Lord. And I thank you for each one that's here, Lord, that you would just bless them immensely. For it's in your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. 2 Timothy 2.22